very good afternoon from a rather grey and dismal Sydney Harbour for the final race of the 2023-24 season and it's the Queen of the Harbour. All skiffs will be uh, having their normal crew plus one more and uh, at the end of the day there will be a Queen anointed. And uh, hello, I'm Peter Shipway, and on board the Camera Cat today, we have our, our own queen, Queen of the Waves, Adrian Kahalan. Welcome to you, Adrian. And Thanks, Adrian's sir. been a uh, skiff sailor, 12 footers, 18s, round the world sailor, Sydney Hobart sailor, and won the recent Sydney Hobart race as the winning navigator. So, Adrian, a very warm welcome. Thank you, Shippo. Well, it's nice to be out back out on the harbour again. Now, you're a guru in everything, Adrian. What do you see weather wise today? Well, this is something that we've always called the sick easterly. Um, there's actually quite a nice high out in the Tasman and some of the forecasts, it, although, although it's hard to believe, might say that we might get a little bit more pressure, but not till later in the afternoon. So it's, it's sub 10 here at the moment. If we're lucky, we might get up to 12 or 13. Yeah, it'll be a very docile day, especially with the, all boats with four crew aboard and uh, all on their big sails. We say good afternoon to Jimmy Bury and uh, Jimmy, for the last time today, for this season, the course. G'day, Shippo. Yep, they've got uh, displaying course flag six over three, so that's the windward leewards, three laps. Um, we're just here, just off Clark Island, and the top marks laid up in, um, in Rose Bay, just under the water tower for those people that know where that is, and got a bearing of 090 of a 0.8 of a mile work. So should be interesting, and I think there's talk if it does, if the breeze doesn't build, they will shorten that to a two-lapper. Well, I think um, we've got most of the fleet out from the uh, standard fleet. I know Andu is not sailing and Noakes are not sailing, but otherwise everyone's out. There's a lot of crew changes, a few skipper changes, and uh, all the girls are on board or the queens are on board, and we'll work through those as the afternoon progresses. But, Adrian, just coming to you, um, a fantastic win in the Hobart race. Just give us a quick overview of that race and uh, a tricky one weather-wise for everyone, wasn't it? But you yeah. obviously got it right on yeah, a live. Yeah, well, look, it, it was one of... Some years, you know, you can... The, the first weather models are... You can start to forecast 16 days out and you'll get to Christmas Day and it will have played out exactly that way. Um, but this was one of those years where even when we left the dock, there was so much uncertainty in the forecast. So that made for a lot of a, a nervous moments. But um, our race sort of became evident where we needed to go, where we took quite a radically easterly course and headed well offshore to go around a big squall line. And that was what our strategy to stay out there in the east nor'easterly right to Tasman Light when we tacked over and met southerly. Well, it was a close win, but uh, any win's a good win, isn't it? It was yeah, fantastic. Yeah, it was, it was a close win, and um, we won uncorrected by 12 minutes, which is a great testament to, to the crew on board because all you have to do is have a... It, it, there was a lot of challenging conditions, and you have a bad reef or a bad sail change, and that adds up 12 minutes so quickly. So we had a, a magnificent team on board who sailed the race so well. Well, we're on the harbour, if you've just joined us, for the Queen of the Harbour, the final race of the season, Adrian Kahalan's our special guest today. And Adrian, what are your memories of 18 foot skiff sailing? I suppose you've got plenty. Oh, and look, most of them you can talk about, some you perhaps can't. <laughs> <laughs> well, I started um, my first season in 1988, which was uh, a season when they introduced the B-18s. And that was in response to the escalating costs when you started to have 30 foot wings and they set a, made a new set of box rules and the Julian Bethwaite design came in. And um, it, it was... It was a great class. Um, I mean, it still is. Uh, we had three rigs then. Though. We had a, quite a big big rig, second rig and a third rig, and if you wanted to, a fourth rig. So there was a lot of sail management going on and a lot of angst when it came to the rigging race on the shore. But um, we went through the Grand Prix circuit uh, through to 93, 94 was when I left and then I went to do the Whitbread. But uh, it, it's just such great sailing. It's so exciting and that part of it hasn't changed. And you won a Queen of the Harbour event, did you? Is that you were telling me earlier on? <laughs> in some sort of bizarre fashion? Well, we won in a bizarre fashion. We've got, I'm pretty sure we've got the only male Queen of the Harbour winner <laughs> because uh, I sailed 
one day, very similar to today actually, and I had my two sisters on board and my old 12 foot skiff called Jimmy Walsh and we won, so he christened himself as Queen of the Harbour. <laughs> very good. Well, um, we're still a little way away from the starting time. It's only 2.31 here on the harbour. Very light conditions, a very sick easterly as we describe it, and looking up towards the weather mark in Rose Bay, there's a lot of little skiffs up there and they're just really drifting about. But anyway, we'll just look at some of the crew changes from the norm, if you like. We've got um, Marine Outlet, and today we've got Brett Van Munster steering the Marine Outlet with Johnny Walton on board. And on the fin port, John Cooley is steering the fin port. Keegan, I believe, is on the sheet with Phil Marshall. And there's another couple of crew changes. The 80 foot at bar and restaurant, Dean Williams is steering. And on sixth, well, this is an interesting one. The four crew are all girls. Tash Bryant, Maddie McClay and Lily Richardson are the three nominated crew. And the queen is Lucy Copeland. Uh, she, I think, is in the Junior America's Cup squad. They, yeah, Tash, right? Tash and... Um and Lucy are both in the, the youth or the Women's America's Cup team and still chasing funding, so get along there and if you want to and... Dip into your pocket. Yeah. Dip into your pocket. They're, um, they're trying very hard to be pretty cool, actually, to have first America, Females America's Cup with yeah. the Australian on team screen, yeah. um, Also on the Lazarus, Marcus Jones steps back and he assures me this is his final race after 15 years at the helm of Lazarus and he's got Tom Kunick and Geronimo Harrison with him and Ava Smith yeah, from Ava's, the Connells Ava's... Point Sailing Club. I think she's yeah. the, the queen on board there. Yeah, she's a laser sailor. She's 18, so it's nice to see some of the next generation of great dinghy sailors coming out today. And Vicobi. Tell us about Vicobi. Uh, Jimmy, you know a bit about that crew today. Yeah, well, Beth, Beth is jumping on board, which is Pat's daughter from Vicobi. That's Beth Langley and Pat yeah. Langley, the sponsor, Mr Vicobi. And, yeah. and Pat himself is actually jumping on board in the bow. So he said, try and keep the camera off him, which we promise we will not. Well, he'll need a couple more knots, I think, to get out on the wire. It's very light here as we're <laughs> probably about uh, just over 10 minutes away from the start. Up off Clark Island. And there's the Vicobi just practising a couple of jibes. Kirk Mitchell steering. And his normal crew are not on board today of Daniel um, Barnett and Andrew Stevenson. Well, and the on... no, I was going to say that the tide is uh, high at 3.30 this afternoon, so they're going to be racing against an incoming tide, which will be interesting. We've just seen a couple of other fleets out on the harbour do some um, tactics. So, um, which way to go? Up there to that mark in just below the Rose Bay. So it should make for interesting sailing, which way they go up the start line. Now, on board the Marine Outlet, here's a bit of history. I was given this and I had to query it, but they assure me that it is correct. The Queen on Marine Outlet is Yasmin Christensen, and she is the great, great, great niece of JJ Giltman. So there's a bit of history for us. It's the JJ nice Giltman. Yeah. yeah, trophy awarded last week to uh, Yandu, Mika Lane. A very emphatic win at the end of the, um, the big title. But here we are on the harbour today in very, very light air. A few boats just uh, going upwind, having a look at the conditions, then running back. There's Marine Outlet. And on the s we've got Brett Van Munster, the helmsman there today, with Charlie Gundy and Johnny Walton. And there's the kitchen maker. Um, today's partner in the race for the Queen of the Harbour is the 18-footer bar and restaurant. Dean Williams is the helmsman there. And I think it is his daughter, Chelsea Williams, who yep. is the Queen on board that, Jimmy. I think I've got that right. Yes, that is correct. And um, and then you got Hamish, which is Chelsea's partner, is on board as well. They've actually <coughs> got the whole... They've got the, the family. The clan. Got They've the got the family. family. There's Dean Williams, his wife, Susanna, yes. and uh, the daughter, Chelsea Williams, and then Hamish Bath. So that's an interesting <laughs> yes. one to watch. Interesting, yeah, uh, yeah. interesting yeah. drive back up to the lake after yeah. today's <laughs> racing. <laughs> yeah. 
And on Finport, which is today being steered by John Cooley, who's normally on Marine Outlet, the Queen on board Finport is Abby. No, I've got a Holly. I've got Abby on one form and Holly on the other, but I think it's Holly with her family watching from England. I think that's right. I think she may be the partner of John Cooley. Apologise if I've got that wrong, but I think that's the way it goes. And her family are watching from um, sunny England, probably a bit early in the morning and a bit cooler over there. It's quite warm here, but it's not quite as warm as it has been, Adrian. We're sort of getting into autumn weather now, aren't we, do you think? Yeah, yeah we are, actually. I mean, we've had a lot of days of 30 degrees leading up to the middle of March, which in itself is unusual. Uh, and so just going behind the start boat, there's the JJ champion, Mick Elaine, Fang Warren. And they got Emma Bryant. Phillips on board, yep. who beat Fang at the 29er Worlds. Yeah, that's... Shout out to her parents in Sorrento. Yeah, Tim Phillips there, and there's Emma with uh, Fang Warren. And she's up from Victoria. There's Mick Elaine, the victorious JJ skipper. If you just joined us, um, we've got Adrian Cahallan aboard today as our very special guest on, appropriately, the Queen of the Harbour Day. And it's very light, Adrian, isn't it? We don't see any build in this weather yet. Oh, today's the sort of day where you, it's a knee breaker. Yeah. Because, uh, you know, one of the great things about sailing skiffs is being able to hop on that trapeze and lie out and steer and relax. But um, when you've got the conditions like this, it's very much a lot of um, in, out, in, out, and uh, in terms of um, on and off trapeze. So it's going to be, it's going to be quite the physical test for some of the crews today. There's the Shore and Partners, and Emma Tallis is the queen on board there. She's um, a daughter of one of the Vicobi people, I think, yeah, Jimmy, is Sarah, that right? Sarah, that's um, at Vicobi. She's been there pretty much though, since the inception of Vicobi. And um, another cool fact for that young Emma is her idol in sailing is Emma Rankin. So what a day for her. Yeah, uh, fantastic. So the kitchen maker is out. Uh, six we've addressed. Fisher Pikel, Jenna Searle is Richard Searle's daughter, and he's the GM of Fisher Pikel. So that's a nice touch for Jenna. On Smeg is Karen Benson. We'll get to those as we get through the fleet. And there's uh, Fisher, there's Fisher Pikel there, I think. Is that yeah? There's yep. Jordan Gertis. I can see him standing up. You can just see how light it is. Really, and there's your knee bending days, Adrian, yep. as you're saying. Well, it's a nice mixture today. I think uh, other girls are taking um, different roles on board, aren't they? There's some that might not be sailors yeah. that won't be taking um, a major role, but we've got a few skippers, girls skippering. It's a great opportunity, actually, to get um, some of the other classes, the girls from the other classes, to come out and sail and. Uh, hopefully with a view to them joining the class later on in their sailing career. Well, also, it is not first past the post is the winner. As we hear the hooter go from the committee vessel, five flags up for five minutes to go. Each boat is assigned a handicap in minutes, and the winner will be adjusted after the finish. So first home is not necessarily the winner. It well could be but handicaps will come into play. And Adrian being not only an outstanding navigator and good friend, she's an outstanding mathematician. Gosh, <laughs> so, put me on the spot no, today. No, well, that's the game we play here, Adrian. <laughs> so you're going to have to work out these handicaps in rapid fashion. But the, the boat on the biggest <laughs> handicap is the 80-footer bar and restaurant. She's got a 10 minutes handicap. And I think we'll just look at some of these now. The scratch boats, who are the scratch we, we boats? Also, uh, Yes, oh, it's another 10 minute boat, yeah. Yeah, no, but they're not, they're not racing, that's today. correct. So yeah. it's uh, the 18 footers, but the Williams family there, they're going to be. Okay. Got the great 10 minutes, and we've got two scratch boats Yandu and Finpoint, Finport Finance, are the two scratch boats. We've got um, Burrowong, uh, Simon Nern. Nine yep. minutes. Nine minutes. Well, he could come into play. You're not you're yeah. not going to go very far in this race. And they were thinking of having a handicap start, but they felt that by the time the handicaps, if they start them at a handicap, the boats wouldn't get very far in this light air. So it's better to adjust them after the race finishes. Yeah. There's the Oak Double Bay. And I um, believe... Six, the, the crew of six, which has got to be a favourite with the four girls on board, mm. um, they've got nine minutes. So they've actually got a reasonable chance. You'd, you'd put your money there, I think. Yeah, nine minutes. They're all great sailors, so... All right, we've got three minutes... 
25 to go and uh, final race for the season. We welcome you all. I won't list all our regular viewers because you're all back again and it's wonderful to have you for the final time from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. We'll uh, mention Olivia Dameron. He's always there. And Ian Nipper Henderson and Joy Brown, Brian Phillips, Paul McNamara, thank you again for watching and listening to us and that's uh, been great to have your company as there's the all girl crew adrian that that's nice isn't it the sixth team yeah that's right and uh that again that's tash bryant maddie mcclay lily richardson and uh lucy copeland so that's a that's a great... formidable outfit absolutely and uh I, I think they'll do a great job out there today they look so comfortable i mean the boats are great to sail and uh, easterly is in fact although there's not much wind it's actually quite a nice breeze very tactical and uh these girls are as i mentioned are very good sailors so i think you'll see some good moves from them yes yeah, so it's very casual in the park this morning and this afternoon opposed to last sunday when it was pretty tense and the final heat of the jj's everyone was pretty uptight nervous but today's a very relaxed sort of day you can get out there and enjoy it not much wind so as adrian was saying that uh, you're not being overwhelmed by the conditions it's, it's very light and a little bit more breeze here what have we got about eight knots adrian at that seven or eight knots i guess yeah that's right and we've got two minutes to the start so uh just watching everybody lining up here there doesn't seem to be any favoured end right at the moment in terms of um where everybody's setting up for the race no it's uh there's the pin with a minute 40 to go good crew on the uh spectator ferry away to our starboard side which is nice to see still plenty of interest even in this race i think the interest will be no one will really know the winner until everyone has finished and the handicaps have been worked out but you wouldn't want to get too far from this line adrian this light air would you it's very light here no and you've also got the tide against you too so that'll be pushing you back off the line so yeah you want to make sure that you do a good time run into the start here we've got a couple of crews um we've got smeg at bigfoot they're looking at, they're setting themselves up with a minute to go quite early at the okay. moment well, Bigfoot, the Queenslanders, they've stayed on, which is nice. Rachel Ward, an MG sailor, is the queen on board uh, the Bigfoot. So nice that they've stayed on for another week after the JJs. Dave Hayter, Ben Roxburgh, and Niall Kinch. So they've got a handicap of five minutes. Yeah, they'll be there or about, thereabouts. They had a pretty good JJs. And spank has got four minutes, so that's yeah. a good handicap for them. Okay, there's... The Marine Outlet, Brett Van Munster. We've got just under 30 seconds there. Everyone's pretty relaxed, I think. We're a few boats waddling up towards the starting line. The Lazarus, Marcus Ashley James at the helm. He'll be a formidable competitor with that big, big sail that he's got. Oh, is Finport going to go trying to get barging in? How long we got? 10, 9? Still quite a long way back off the line. Yeah, the Finport's trying to get in there. They're going to be early, though. No, they can get down. No, I think we're all clear. We're all clear, I think, Jimmy, are we? Yeah, there's a big cheer going up from the ferry alongside us. Clear start was the call. uttered by Jeremy. So okay, there's Yandu right down at the pin, the champion. Here comes Vicobi across on port, just ducking the, the fleet. And it's very light. You can just see the crew, one of the crew. Oh, that's, I think, oh, that's Beth, Beth yeah. Langley, Pat's They've daughter, sitting to lure there. They've only got a handicap of two minutes, actually, mm. so... A little tough a bit it out pressure a bit. on there. Oh, there's... Okay, come on out to get Pat. There we go. Pat's on the sheet. <laughs> on the sheet. Jeez. Okay. Didn't ask me for any pointers, so... <laughs> okay, there's Lazarus. She's probably got the... Uh... Oh, she's just fallen into a big hole there. six coming back the girls well certainly if you do go out to this left hand side of the course you'll be in the maximum tide so we'll see but just these look, are the boats now yeah, heading out just looking the, where we are adrian off the start line it's a bit more breeze perhaps to the point piper side isn't it a bit yeah. to the right of course yes yeah, so six now they're heading out to the um to the southern side of the harbour yeah. to chase that east Pressure. And these boats led by Yandu are going towards Bradley's head and it's very light, very light indeed. Top of screen you can see some TP-52s racing. They've got a series on at the moment on the harbour. The fleet are away in the Queen of the Harbour 
light airs, easterly of oh, seven to eight knots at best. We've got Fisher and Pike all up there. They've, yep. they've got eight minutes handicap. Yeah, they're probably a bit of a tail end Charlie at the moment, looking at the, the fleet. Ah, there, that gives a bit of perspective. Yandu down the leeward end and as a way, but boat's in the middle a bit higher than she is and a bit more pressure. And right to windward is Finport, looking very strong on the Point Piper side of the course. We'll get to them in a moment. There's Finport in so the middle. There she is. Finport started right at the boat. Yeah. The boat, and they, they were right on the line. And they so tacked they early and got yeah. out to the right. The Vicobi went furthest to the right with sixth, and those boats looking back at the fleet look fairly strong. They're starting to get a bit more pressure. They're getting a few more on the wire now. We well, don't have any first crosses coming up here yet. So no, we, we don't. See oh, Yander's yeah, tacked, and she doesn't look too good. She looks a bit ugly back on the Bradley's Head fairway, boy. Well, they did. They have gone out there to Bradley's Head in maximum tide against them, and it wouldn't normally play a role, but I think on a very light day like today, you do have to take in that into consideration, that incoming tide. Well, I think what's happened, Adrian, is the breeze has filled in from the right and lifted. So the boats that have gone right look very strong. And Yandu looks about second or third last, looking back at the moment. And Vicobi, Finport and Sixth look as though they're the three leading boats here, I think. Adrian, see them here? That's the, right. The big foot, she's handily placed. She went out to the right as well. Now, it looks like... There's six. Six. We've got someone, one of the crew were just down the back um, adjusting something on the rudder there, so I'm not sure if they had a little technical issue. Well, Pat Langley, Mr Vicobi, will be liking what he's seeing there. There he is with Kirk Mitchell at the helm. Just to lure to them is Finport, and Finport probably leads. I think that's what we're seeing. And this long, rather longish work up into Rose Bay in, in time anyway, because it's so light, seven or eight knots. Very overcast day here on the harbour. And Finport's really barrelling along there. Down to... Yeah, it'll be interesting to see if they take a tack back soon just to protect that to cover off a bit, side yeah. of the course. Because certainly the boats that are coming out of the um, that from the pin end just kept going straight out to Bradley's head haven't done very well at all. No, one of those was Yandu. But here's the great drone shot right into the now is Keegan York on the sheet, is he Jimmy? Or is that can we see there? The so Keegan is on board with Phil Keegan Marshall. Keegan looks like he's in the bow. Keegan in the bow. So John Cooley is steering the Finport today and they're off to the races here. Rag and Famish has worked his way into a, a reasonable position. They've got... Um, They've got Madison Murphy yeah, on board as yeah. the Queen and she's a, a manager of the Rag and Rag Famish. Rag and Famish, so yeah. So that's nice to have uh, one of the team. Yeah, intimately involved with the Rag and Famish Hotel. I think they've got um, two girls aboard the Rag and Famish today. Beck Hancock is sailing because Josh McKnight is not sailing. So Finn Rodowitz, Beck Hancock, Harry Price and Madison Murphy. So, And Beck sailed the JJ Gilton, the skipper of Noakes Youth. Is that Noakes, yes, yeah, that's so, right. Yeah. Okay, well, here's, we're back with Vicobi looking strong in second position I'd say and how far we're, we're about um, two-thirds the way up Jimmy I'd say aren't we to the yeah, weather absolutely, mark absolutely like the top top marks almost just off oh, the, uh, the wharf of breeze the best we've seen it Adrian. maybe eight knots here nine knots yeah it, it, the forecast was that it might build slightly and it appears to be doing that at the moment it's just gone up a knot or two all the boats are getting three um, Mostly getting three to four people on the wire, which is great. Okay, well, there's the rag with the two girls on board. There's Vicobi. Vicobi very close to the lead here. Got nice right hand pressure. You'll see shortly Finport. I think Vicobi's in the lead. Finport's taking a stern here. Well, fin Finport pushed the uh, Shark Island side yeah, quite hard, let 
Vicobi stay out on the right-hand yeah, side of the course? The pressure on the lift is in the right. So Vicobi leads narrowly. Yes, it's not a great deal of breeze, but just a fraction more as we approach Shark Island. There's Finport going away on port in towards Point Piper. They're the three leaders, Vicobi, Finport and Rag. And, and just a reminder that all marks rounded to port today in the Windward Lewis. And there's no gate at the bottom of the run. Formerly in these Windward Lewis there's been a gate. You can choose your win, uh, right or left hand mark, but just one mark to go around. So here's the pack that's chasing them. So Adrian, give us a quick view now with the handicaps. How do you think anything standing out here for you? I'll put you under pressure. So, so Burrawong, they have a handicap of nine minutes. Where are they? They're, yeah, they're about a minute or so back. Yeah, and yep. we have six on nine minutes. What about we, these? Vicobi here are on, um, they've got two minutes. Oh, okay. What about yeah. Finport? And they're Finport scratch, aren't they? Finport is a scratch boat, so. And Rag? What's Rag on? Rag is, um, they're one minute. Okay. Yeah, All these boats. So it's, it's pretty tight at the moment. Yeah. And well. It's amazing how quickly the fleet separated, spread out, actually. Um, over the race course. You'd think that in this lighter wind they'd be a bit more closer together, but uh, certainly those boats that started at the boat end or tacked off the line out to the right hand side of the course have done better today. And, and interestingly, it will be interesting to see which way they um, well, go out in the, once they round the top mark. Well, if, if we get a look at there's the uh, Finport and Rag coming back on off Point Piper, but Vicobi has really jumped them here. She went into the Shark Island a bit further, got a nice left-hander, and that's the gap. Remembering that Finport they've... took their stern about two minutes ago, and now they've jumped out to a lead of about 60 or 80 metres here. Yeah, Vicovia have really done a great job of staying in the pressure the whole way up here. Yeah. I mean, although the right-hand side of the course has been a little bit favoured, there are some lanes of wind, and I think vicovia has been sort of great racing, just keeping in the pressure all the time. There's the sixth and Smeg. On board the Smeg, we've got uh, we've got Karen Benson, the sponsor. And sixth, we've got the girls. And they've got four minutes handicap. Smeg. Okay. Well, it's a little bit early yet, but uh, just nice to get an overview. There's Smeg, a ferry bound for Rosebay, going to come through the fleet in a moment. That is not a rounding mark for the 18s. The, Vicobia is approaching. There's the 18 footers. They're in a handy position. The, uh, sorry, the big foot. They are about uh, third or fourth. So that the 18 footers, they've got a 10 minute handicap. Oh, yeah, okay. So that would set them up quite well. Yeah. Okay, and, and we're on Vicobia. Not short of tacking. There he goes now. And that's the orange mark, top of screen that he's laying into. And he's looks he's on a pretty nice lay line here. Yes. And it'll be interesting, we've seen some of the other fleets uh, in the races just prior to this race starting. They've all gone out towards Bradley's um, when they've gone around these top marks here. So let's see if the 18 foot of fleet follow suit. Definitely sort of going out there. It'll be a real trick this run to stay in the pressure, which by Kobe's done so well so far in this race. Well, I'm lucky, it's lucky Yandu got his job done last week because he's way back at the moment. And Yando was one of the boats that went up towards Bradley's yes. head. Yes. So. Okay, well, here's Vicobi, the leader of the Queen of the Harbour. They're around. Kirk Mitchell and the, the Langley's on board. Now, yeah, come on, you've got to get into this spinnaker work, boys Two and girls. Handicap. Okay, well, they've got a nice little lead here. And I think it's going to be Bigfoot from Queensland who are going to be second. Where did uh, Finport end up there, Jimmy? He... Got lost a bit. Oh, he's still a long way from the mark. So the, the Bigfoot is going to be second. Oh, Finport got absolutely lost a little bit. Yeah, Finport. As did Rag and Famish. And it's light again up here. The guy, the, Seven or eight knots. The team the on Bigfoot, Bigfoot, have they decided to move town? Stay I don't down know. Here? I don't know. It's nice. They're, they're around they go. <coughs> Rachel Ward. So at the moment, they'd, they'd be ahead of, uh, they've, they've got a five minute handicap. Oh, okay, so well they're prom in Inside prominent. two minutes behind okay, the mark there. Yeah, but we well. also have here um, six coming in, 
They've got nine minutes. Six that. Wow, they're yeah. handily placed. Yeah, so that, they're well placed. They're only a couple of minutes behind yeah, the so leader. So Finport tacking under them. They're going to roll them here, I think. The six will get the bow down and get the job done. So they're third. Finport fourth. I the rag will be fifth. Oh, it's light here. Just see the sails collapse on Finport. Good bit of gold oh, power okay. there on six Very coming good. around. Very okay. nice to see. Finport pushed that shark on a bit too hard. I think they got out of the breeze there. That's where they lost some time. Okay, the rags are out. Finport jibing quickly, as is the rag. So they want to get back to that point pipe ashore. Oh, Finport's got a bit on. Oh. I'm surprised they're um, jibing at this mark, actually, and pushing that side, unless they think there's a little bit more pressure. Because certainly, out to the right hand, the tide's better to take yeah. it down the course. Well, it's only a point five tide though, so not a lot of movement, but still enough in this lighter breeze. Though. Yeah, to make a difference. So you can see Smeg have just tacked and very soft, very soft here. So you would think that six on nine minutes would be leading on handicap yeah, at the moment. Yeah, pretty strong, but yeah. a bit of a way to go. Because the only boats on a better handicap than them are eighteen footers. And we haven't seen have them yet, or the Barrowang. Over towards North Sydney from our position, the 18 footers oh, still okay. work their way up. They're well back. The okay. other problem with jiving is you, uh, at this mark, is you have to do a windward set, as you can see they're doing yes. there on Smeg. Okay, well, here comes the Barrowang. But they did a good job on Smeg there with their set. Maria Louis Louisa Coulson, she's from Perth. She's wanting to get into 18 footers. She's hoping to go overseas for the European circuit and would like to come back next year and race 18s. and. Very successful skipper. She's steering the boat. And they're into a jibe as well. And here comes a, there's Louisa, Maria Louisa Coulson. And here comes a big group led by the Royal Oak. They're around. Pamela Johnson's the queen there. She's the world women's OK dinghy champion. Kitchen Makers next, Maddie Lavis, and then Shore and Partners, Emma Tallis, and then next around is the champion, Yandu. Well, he's got a bit to do, old oh, Mika Lane. And way in the distance, we're just getting, look at sixth, he's in good shape. Well, they are in good shape, and they're a group of girls. Next. Next around is Brett Van Munster and them. Tell you who got lost up there, Jimmy, was Lazarus. Yep, they got a reason, pretty good start and they got a big, big sail, as we said before. Well, and plus in these um, these light easterlies too, it's once you get behind, it's very hard to punch out <laughs> because it's so light and, um, and, and, and there's a lot of... Oh, we're nearly got to capsize off camera. Sorry, Adrian, kitchen oh, maker. Oh, no, I was just saying, it's, when it's light, it's actually really hard because there's such bad disturbed air from the boats in front of you that um, you can't just bang a corner and try and come back into it. Well, that was the kitchen maker in the foreground, almost capsized in the jibe. They've got a good handicap, eight minutes, but it's not doing them any favours at the moment. They're quite a way behind. So we go up to the leading group, and in the distance, Thomas Grizz by Kobe. There's six, the Ragged Famish, and Smeg right in on the point. Then off camera is is the Big Foot, and uh, Finport's come back into this a little bit. But six looks handily placed. They've got good pressure. And we're about halfway down the run, back to the starting area. Royal Oak, Pamela Johnson. So the top boat in the race at the moment is like Bobby. They're coming down to the bottom mark, which will be rounded to four. Yeah, they're a little way off the ley line yet. Yeah, second, second would be Bigfoot. Third, sixth. And sixth and fifth quarter having a great battle. There's Mike Kobe there now coming, lining up the ley line into the bottom mark. And I expect Shippo that given what happened up the first beat, you'll probably see people around the mark and... Head off to the right, you think? Head off to the right, I'd yeah. say. Yeah, so it was a big, 
loser going back left. But anyway, there's the big foot with his purple spinnaker. He is uh, in second place, as Adrian said. And by Kobe, not for, oh, he's jiving now by Kobe to set up to come in. You'll just see him. There he is. Meanwhile, the big foot's charging down here. What's their handicap, Adrian? Uh, Bigfoot's five minutes. Oh, okay. Yeah, so well, they're right in play. They are indeed. And interesting now, you've got six, which has a handicap of nine minutes, and uh, Bigfoot, which is on scratch. So, so, so remember, you got it right at the moment. The first boat home is not necessarily the winner. The winner of the Queen of the Harbour is on handicap. Light airs, light easily. Seven to eight knots at best on the harbour. This is the set, first of three laps. Only one marked around at the Lewin end of this run. No gate around the port and on their way up for the second beat. Now, it'd be interesting to see if um, uh, Bigfoot here has to do another jive. To well, he's a bit high mark. on this mark, isn't he? Yeah, yeah that will be costly for him, I'm afraid, because like Kobe at the moment looked like they'll. A nice that. conservative drop. Okay, he goes. I think Bigfoot's going to no, get there. They will get around. Actually. It's just a little puff drifting down to them. It's uh, on screen. It's on, on the screen, it's really hard to see those little lanes of pressure that are there actually out on the harbour, and that's what they, all the crew on board. They'll have their eyes up the course, just looking for that pressure. Tiny little bit. It's only a click, an extra half a knot, but it makes a massive difference. Okay, so it's Queenslander, as you can see, leading the fleet. And by Kobe round, and then Finport's made a good charge into third with uh, Johnny Cooley steering, Keegan York and Phil Marshall. And we believe the Queen of the Harbour on Finport is uh, Holly. Next around will be sixth and the rag and famish. And then coming in wide off camera is Smeg. Oh, very light. Looks like the tactic is not to leave the not to dive too early down at this bottom mark. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh we got a touch rigs. Oh, oh six. Oh, oh, six oh, missed the shame. mark. Okay, because they were well in the way yeah. on the handicap. Okay, they've only... got to do a turn here and get back and around the mark. They've still got enough time. It's only been 50 seconds since the boat, first yeah. boat's gone okay. around. Okay, meanwhile, well, that's shenanigans. Smeg goes round the outside and ends up in third place. The rags almost head to wind. But very light here again, Adrian, isn't it? It's sort of six or seven knots with all the boats taking the wind of others. Sixth around behind Rag and Famish. Remember, you can hit the marks in 18 footers. You can't hit the other boat. Well, you can, but then you're in trouble. But you can kiss the mark. The Rag's tacking early. And six, well, they did a well executed turn there, yep. to their credit. So they lost a couple of boats. There's been a lot of compression in the fleet here, too. Um, the fleet's a lot closer than they were at the top mark now. They so, must have brought some pressure down. So, yeah, and who's got back into this? A, a, a lot. A lot, yes. Shore and Partners round. Emma Tallis on board there with the team. Of... And it is a bit tricky, too, sailing with four people on board on these boats, you know, um, because you, particularly when you're setting and dropping, you know, that extra person. Gets and, in the way. <laughs> they do. And, yeah. and, and in, on a normal day, we'd had plenty of breeze. You'd just sit out on the wing. but Keep out of the way, but it's a bit hard to keep out of the way. It's a bit hard today yeah. because any extra weight out on that wing might dip the wing. And once you dip a wing on an 18, it's like a handbrake. So. Well, there's Pamela Johnson aboard the Royal Oak, the world women's OK dinghy champion. With... Um, Where's the OK Dinghy fleet base these days? Well, I think there's some up at Dremoyne. They've just had their world championship up in Brisbane. I think there's over 100 boats, or there's a lot of boats up there. Yeah, So they're still a popular class, yeah. especially in uh, Scandinavia, I think, and And uh, New Brisbane's Zealand. a tough place to sail, too. It can get very choppy, very windy. So who have we got here? This is the kitchen maker. And they've got a handicap of eight minutes, the kitchen maker. Maddie so Lavis. So it's only been two minutes fifty since the first boat's gone around. So they're. So she's steering, I think. The Maddie is steering. She's um, sailed Cherubs and Elliot Sevens. Yeah. And here comes the Barrowang. Here she comes, Maria Luisa Coulson. 
Simon Nern, the uh, normal skipper, is just as a cr crew member today, and Maria Louisa steering. So it's great that these girls are steering. There's the bell. Uh, there's getting slowly rounds the Burrowang next to come round. Well, they've got a handicap of nine minutes, so they've, although they're quite a long way place-wise, they're time-wise, they're not, they're quite still in it. Yeah, um, the Burrowong. And then we have Balmain. Burrowang, you don't say Burrowong. We, we, we get a barrage of phone calls. Oh, do you Burrowang? I yes. think you're part of it. A big group of them sit there in the hotel watching this live. So, <laughs> so who else we got on nine minutes, uh, ten minutes? Uh, so we got the only one on ten minutes is um, the eighteen footers, is it? Is, it, is the eighteen footers? Well, she's 18 well, 18 well footers. Back, she's well back. She's still halfway down the run. And Barrow Wang is on nine minutes. And who's the other on nine? And six is six. On okay, well, nine they, minutes. I, even though they had that bit of kerfuffle up at the no, they Lewin recovered mark. very well. Yes. Yeah. So we're away up the second of three beats. There's the 80 footer bar and restaurant. They're today's partner. That's the Williams family. Well, they're a long way back, unfortunately. So there might be a discussion over dinner tonight. Which is nice. There's, there is more pressure off this side of the course. We can see that now. It's just building quite nicely. Well, we explained why the fleet compressed so much there at the bottom mark, but maybe it might fill in down to the bottom mark on the next, on the next run down. Well, on Yandu, he's making big inroads. He's about fifth at the moment, but up ahead, that has really bolted away, has been Bigfoot from Queensland. They're approaching Shark Island, there's Mick Elaine and his team of um, Brandon Byings in today, standing in for Louis Brake. Louis's over in Fremantle, sailing in the World Etchel Championship with a sailor called John Bertrand. From so one World Championship to another. That's right. Win well, one, see how he goes in the edge. That's right. So they've got Brandon's in the bow, Fang Warren, Mick Elaine and Fang's partner. And there's my coach. Emma. And Smeg. Okay, there's Smeg. Smeg, they've got a four minute handicap and they've got their sponsor on board, Karen Benson. Well, they're starting to get a bit of pressure. Oh, they've got three on the wing having a chat and one standing up at the mast. So it's a very casual day on this final day of racing for the 18 footers. So Smeg have got themselves into about second spot, I, I think. second spot, Chippo, yeah. Yeah, I think you're right, Jimmy. They, interesting that Finport, Vicobi and Ray pushed that side of the course so hard when they did. They've gone out to the left-hand side, Vicobi, when in the first um, month they did so well in the right hand. I'm surprised they pushed that corner. And Finport are coming back. Um, they're off screen at the moment, but they're not in very much wind, which is exactly what happened to Yandu last time. So we're up surprising almost, technical decision there from Finport. We're almost between the eastern end of Point Piper and Shark Island. The breeze is probably the best we've seen all day. It's lucky to be eight knots, but it's been down to six or seven at times, but eight or nine knots here. And Smeg, and there's Rag and Famish way down to Lewis, he's gone out to the left again, which doesn't look as though it's been a highly a successful move, move no. no. Definitely not. Just, to, the problem with the left-hand side of the course is, even though there's not much left of tide, it still is against you, and, and lacking in pressure. Definitely. Well, that's Shark Island, and that's Bigfoot, and they've gone a, a little bit too far. They're running out of pressure, but they're just they, coming they in. They just tacked. They're just coming into some more wind here. So, on Bigfoot is Rachel Ward, the MG sailor? Not the actress. No, not the not actress. The, we don't think anyway. I oh, know, we're wondering if Brian Brown would be yes. able to Ra Rachel's originally from Queensland, so it's quite fitting that she's sailing with the Queenslanders. Yeah, that's right. And there she's on, she's on trapeze yeah. there. The all pink. In the main sheet position. Yeah. And they've got a nice little gap. And Yandu, surprise, surprise, is in about third or fourth position or even closer but they're well will be well back on handicap because they're on they're on scratch yeah, scratch, yeah. On scratch. Yeah. but Bigfoot has five minutes right. yeah. okay well they're about uh, 150 meters from the weather mark for the second time look at that overhead shot isn't that fantastic
There's Finport and Yandu going into Point Piper. So big, the big foot leads. And the top mark's quite a long way up into Rose Bay here, so sometimes you see a bit of a split in the breeze, uh, between the breeze close to Shark Island and that close to Point Piper. So the boats that did the best in the last lap headed towards Point Piper. Point Piper and came in there on the starboard ley line. Yeah, so. well, that's exactly what the Bigfoot have done. They've, they'll be pretty tight on the ley line looking at it at the moment. They're looking for that right hand pressure, aren't they, Adrian? There's a bit more in the right, as you say. Yeah, there's definitely more pressure coming in out from the right hand side. They look as though they might be laying or they might be tight. We'll have a look at a moment when we get Jimmy to line us up here. There's the mark. Yeah, I think they're doing it at the moment. The body language, ship The body <laughs> I'd forgotten. <laughs> no, they're struggling at the moment. They're just under it. We're right lined up with them. They'll just need to fight for some height here. Oh, they're getting that little lift. Here they go. Yeah, looking good. And that's a um, well judged strategy they've got. They've got one person sitting on the leeward wing. Yes. The McKee brothers like, used to like doing that, actually, back in the day, the American, the American brothers. American team, yeah. very Pretty good sailors. Incredible those. sailors, yeah. Okay, well, the Bigfoot leads. What a ley line. That is yeah. very accurate, very accurate. Up, up, they say, well, as I say, you can kiss the mark as long as you don't tow it with you, I guess. We've seen that before today. The Bigfoot leads. A very comfortable lead for Bigfoot. We saw the, our friends from Bavaria tow the marker along in the JJ Giltons for a while. There's a nice set on the Bigfoot running into Shark Island on starboard. And very costly, uh, who's off screen for Vicobi, who's really dropped Oh, out they've, gone, they've gone backwards. Yeah. What's happened to those boys? But They just hit the left hand side of the corner. Too far, too yeah, they went, yeah. as did the rag. Yeah. Okay, Shore and Partners, Emma Rankin. She's got herself into third. Or maybe close to second. Yeah, sure and partners, they've got six minute handicap, so. Well, they'll probably be about the chance. a minute behind the Bigfoot. Snake's got a four minute. Okay. So oh, we're coming up to 54 seconds since Bigfoot came around. Oh, well, it's pretty tight between yeah, no, Shore and partners. You've got to get those buttons across on the Shore and partners. They're working at it now. Okay, Smeg's now. around. And oh, we've lost six who's not on screen. Yeah, oh, yeah. So, oh. Which is disappointing for oh, them. Oh, they're well back. Okay, this is a good effort from Shore and Partners. Emma Tallis is the queen, and then Emma Rankin steering. She's had some really good races this season as they jibe off. And here comes Yandu, the champion. Never to be denied. They've got themselves a big chance for line honours, as they say. Yes, and that's Emma Phillips. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, the 29, yeah. 29 sailor. Okay, John Cooley's around in Finport. Finpoint are a scratch boat, so... Yeah, they'll, they'll s struggle now. Yeah, they've got one minute 45. So they've got since the one more run to go and then a, another lap. So Shore and Partners has jibed off as there's six now. They're a long way back, aren't they? They were a lot they'll more be They'll be disappointed because uh, they sailed a great first lap and just that uh, error on the ley line down at the bottom mark was very costly for them. And, and, and sometimes, too, when you're in this situation, if you go into a bottom mark not in great shape and you want to go to a certain part of the course, sometimes even if you want to get there, you can't get there. You know, if another boat's already just uh, got around the mark in front of you and you're stuck in their dirty air, and that, so it means that you've got to start making less than optimal tactical decisions, and, and that might have been what happened to sixth up that beat there. So Rag and Fosh, that's Harry Price. They've got one... One minute. Yeah, they got lost up there too. Yeah. Because Madison, they went out to the left. They've got Madison Murphy on board, who's a manager at the Rag and Famish. So six, step. Oh, still not around the top. No, nah, they missed it. And yeah. the shorts, they've got to tack back right on the gas of. Who's that behind them? Oh, uh, Vicobi. No, Vicobi. The, the other thing, in, in this wind too, you know, this really light wind, taxi 18s are very costly. So you saw that. Um, Bigfoot came, picked a lay long a long way out, just came in on pressure. 
and that's what I've got again in one or two vote leaks. So there's sixth around the top mark. Now that's three minutes, 16 seconds since the uh, first oh, vote well, went around. Oh, well, nine minutes are still in play yeah, then. They've, they've got nine minutes, you know. And, and definitely with this, what we've seen so far in this race with the more pressure up here at the top mark, the votes that uh, are coming down behind, there's been a lot of compression at the bottom mark wind-wise, so that, if they're lucky, the back-enders might get that again. There's Lazarus, <laughs> Marcus on his farewell tour of duty. He's not, he's got to pull something out of the hat here, Jimmy, I think, to yeah. get back into this race. Be, be a deep hat. Yeah, be a deep hat. Well, all the crews at Connell Point Sailing Club will be wanting them on there. They've got Ava Smith, who's a laser sailor. So most skiffs are now on their second of three runs, about halfway down the second run, back to Clark Island, and Thomas Green next to the ferry and is the Bigfoot. They're sticking with the right-hand side of the course, down the run, <coughs> right-hand looking downwind. <laughs> Jandu going right into the western end of Point Piper and he is almost third boat on the water which has been an amazing comeback Then he goes into the jive Brandon Bike in the bow out he goes Emma's out Mick Elaine just standing and looking oh no I think Finport's going to cross them here on the cross Starboard tack rights with Yandu. So, Yo, Finn Porter jiving. So the order on the water will be at the moment Bigfoot from Queensland, Smeg, Yandu, Finn Port, and then Smeg. Now, Shore and Partners, I'm sorry. Shore and Partners. Speak second. Bigfoot have got a um, handicap of five minutes. So. so Bigfoot will have to take one more dive into this bottom mark. Yeah, they can line it up better now. They're a bit closer. They've got a jive shortly. And then have another go at it on port. They go on to starboard now. They're about uh, 80 metres, almost dead downwind of the mark now. Yeah, they would have had the option then of going a little bit further and doing a dive drop at the mark, yeah. but they obviously decided to play it safe. And... There's a swim way yeah, off way in the background. I don't right know off, who that is. Right off Shark Island as a white spinning has capsized. So that's the first of the day. Just watching now oh, the no, big they foot. Did a, they did opt for a jive drop there, but they just a long way away from the mark. Yeah. So they've judged this pretty well, Dave they, Hader and his team. Yeah. Ben Roxburn, Niall Kinch, there they go, with Rachel Ward, the Queen. On board. They're around. They're gonna have a nice lead here. Smeg will be second. Nathan McNamara, Jed Crookshank, and Jack Taylor. Along with Karen Benson. Speak sailed a very good second lap, actually. They just hit the right hand side, stayed in the pressure. There's one on the wire. There's a crowded boat, as you say, Adrian, isn't it, in these light airs? Okay, now just. Around and then the next group will be led by Yandu in third spot, and they're bringing a bit of breeze down with them. Yeah, here. There's, there's no doubt that there's been a one to, one to two knot uptick on the overall wind strength, which is good for the leaders because it makes it harder then for the boats behind to catch up if they don't make any boat handling mistakes. Okay. So the JJ champion goes round in third spot. Wait, geez, what's happening here, Jimmy? We've got so a... they're a scratch boat, Yandu. <laughs> One of your power boat mates went past at some point somewhere. 
I don't have any, many mates in power boats. Anymore, Jimmy. that's for Anymore. sure. <laughs> and the sure, ones I had, I've lost. Sure, and partners are heading around now. That's Emma Rankin. They've got a six minute handicap, so that's a pretty good handicap for them. That's are they more than a minute behind Bigfoot? That's the question now, isn't it, really? No, I think um, Bigfoot have got them on a handicap because they're five minutes. Yeah, and they're sure and partners are six, six aren't minutes, they? So yeah. it's got to be a minute differential. Yeah. If Shaw can be within a minute of Bigfoot, they'd six. be leading. Yeah, there's Vi Kobe who sailed a great first lap but just got lost upwind on the second lap. And... Now, there's a fair... Vi Kobe, gap. they've got only two minutes handicap, so... So there's the Royal Oak. They're going to be next around. Ryan Ewings, Alex Marinelli and Matt Doyle. I think Ryan must be steering today, is he? I yeah, think I believe some he is. Yep. Yep. So that's Ryan, the son of Dave Ewings. Yep. Dave Ewings, who sells with uh, Phil Barnett and Daniel Barnett's out here, his son. Got a lot of sons of the... Yeah. ..who were in Sailing 18s when I was Sailing 18, so Phil was Xerox and Dave Ewing was his his crew and his son Ryan's out here. But you were very young, Adrian, then, weren't you? <laughs> yeah, still out. <laughs> Ryan actually sails a 16-foot skiff nokes down at, um, at St George, so... Did quite yeah, well during the It's great to see all the nationals. sons and, and daughters sailing skiffs. Now, six, the girls coming in. They've uh, lost their way a bit the, after the second lap. Yeah. So we're on the final lap they've now. They've got a good handicap, though. They've got uh, nine minutes. So. Yeah, I don't think it'll be enough, really, to displace either the Bigfoot or yeah. Shore and Partners. We just worked out our swimmer was the kitchen maker, Shippo. <laughs> Well, I thought it was a white spinnaker. They've got a white spinnaker. They've just reset up there. They're the only oh, boat who's that's the still up there. Oh, that's the, the only footer bar. Okay, footers. you're right. The so kitchen that, maker. Today's... That's Maddie Lavis, uh, the cherub sailor. I think they're today's race partner. Oh, no, the only the footers. The footers, uh, yeah. Yep. They had oh. a good handicap, eight minutes. That's They'll need every bit of that and probably another eight, I'd say, Adrian. <laughs> <laughs> they're a fair way back. <laughs> so here we go, halfway up the final beat in sort of eight, eight, not a breeze, maybe a touch more at times, but not there's, much. There's a drop there from the girls. And there's the a group coming into the Lewin markets, very light there. Oh boy, it's light. But the leaders up halfway up the beat. There's Burrowang running down with a good pressure. Simon Nern, yes. the boss, sitting in the middle. He's the they have a handicap of nine minutes. Yeah, well, they'll be... Mm, they had a good, good breeze to get down there. They're, they're carrying some nice pressure there, mm. actually. And um, the interesting to see is that Yandu, who are off-screen, are just going to come in there right now. And Yandu have got nice pressure on the course, coming up to the top mark for yeah. the third time. Yeah. Here comes Lazarus, Mar Marcus Ashley-Jones. Farewell to arms. Now, there's the champion, but not today. Scratch handicap, they're wriggling their way up into the place getters across the line, but it's all about handicap for the Queen. There's Yandu and Finport. And Fit? Fisher and Paykel, they dropped out of Jenna mm. Searle. She's um, part of the Fisher and Paykel company. They haven't had a great one today, unfortunately. Their handicap... But it's eight minutes. Jordan Gertis is the skipper. It's the Barrowang just at the Lewin mark. Well, it's closed up once we get back to the lead. It's closed up a little bit at the front of the fleet. As we're watching, there's the kitchen maker. They're the one we had the capsize, Jimmy, we think, aren't I they? Believe, I believe that's who it was. They look a bit wet there. <coughs> Matty Lavis is steering. So they just got a bit wobbly and there's the 18 footers and the yellow sp spinnaker and Fisher Pikel with Rag and Famish going upwind. It's an interesting one, Cam McDonald hiking on the end of the wing. <laughs> <laughs> Waves so all around, very sure. relaxed. Yes, there's Emma Rankin. Yeah, she's doing a terrific job. She's done a terrific job. job all year, really. Cam just sitting relaxed in the bow. That shows there's a bit more pressure now that they're yes. pulling four strings and nearly four strings on that boat. 
So currently we've got Bigfoot in first, Smeg in second, and actually Finport, who's off camera at the moment, has hit the Point Piper shore. Yeah, we'll have a look at that moment. Might have caught up a, a place here. They did it the first lap, they didn't do it the second lap, and they decided to <laughs> yes, get more, it right the third time. A bit more breeze here at Point Piper, Adrian. We're yeah, probably... there is. It often funnels out of the Point mm, Piper shore yeah. in this east. Com a bit of compression yeah. around the headland. Yeah, you can get a real um, split in the breeze around the Point Piper shore and Shark Island. And that's what happened to um, Finport in that last second lap. Well, there's Finport, left of screen. Speg right of screen. And in the, there's the Finport. So they're third on the water at the moment. And Yandu, who went, went around in third place down at the bottom mark. Well, they went left again and got they clobbered. Off, oh, they're off screen, but they. Oh, went good pressure to hit the here. Left. Sorry, on the Finport. Good pressure. These boats, this leading group, are about 100 metres to the weather mark, or a bit more, perhaps. There's the race leader. Well, you have to hand it to Bigfoot because they've really sailed three good beats. They've been in the pressure the whole way up the course. Yandu stayed the pressure in the second lap, did very well, but the third lap they've come up and gone left again. So, I mean, we always say local knowledge pays out, but here's the guys from Queensland yeah, leading. Queensland. <laughs> what a tricky day. Well, they probably threw out all the preconceptions. Yeah, the just went for it. Yeah. They just went, I'm going to stay in the pressure, and that's what they've done. Eyes out of the boat. Yeah. Or eyes in the boat. There's Smeg, and there we are. There's Smeg's Yandu, well in the background there. And Smeg didn't have a great first beat, but they certainly sailed the second and third Excellent. laps yep. well and have got up second place and kept it. So we're coming up to Rose Bay Mark now, the top mark, which is the last lap for them. Um, so I just got a nice message from um, Rich Searle, and he enjoyed himself in Lord Howe Island. Nice place to be. And your daughter, Jenna, is uh, in the Fisher Pike. They're uh, back a bit, Richard. That's the news I've got for you. I know you've just joined us. Um, they're probably not in contention and we're approaching the last windward beat. But uh, I'm sure they're having a nice day. Not much wind. It's only about eight knots out of the east. So Shiva, we'll take some times up here since it's the last one. And oh, see. Well, that's your job, Adrian. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell me your problems. <laughs> that's what we're paying this big money for, Adrian, to be here. <laughs> So we're approaching the weather mark and, oh, they've gone in a different direction again, the old singing their praises there, the Bigfoot. They've gone over towards Shark Island and lost out a bit, haven't they, I think? That's disappointing for yeah. them because they, they've done it, sailed a great race up Yeah, well, that Finport have got close to them and I think they'll still lead. Yandu's now into the mix. Oh, Finport trying to come around their bow. John Cooley... Steering the Finport. Shore and Partners and Smeg are going to be a lot closer. There they are, top of screen. You can see Smeg. Now I think, oh, who's going to get here first? I think the Bigfoot will. Right in touch with Finport. Yeah, okay. they're going to have, a, have to watch for the boats coming in on the starboard lay line now. No, I think they're above them. Oh, yeah. it looks ugly now up on the top of screen, a bit of waves. Okay, Finport tax, and what's gonna happen here? Bigfoot is across and tax short. Oh, Wooshka. But oh, they missed the mark, they missed oh. the mark. That is very disappointing for <laughs> that them. That is very disappointing. Because they didn't need to, no, to do anything. No. I mean, they're on five minutes. And now they've got to do a loop and to go around the mark. So Finport leads. Finport's a scratch boat, so they just didn't need to take that risk Okay, there. Smeg, what's their handicap, Adrian, please? Smeg is four minutes. Okay, Nathan McNamara and Jed Crookshank. But still advantage Bigfoot because of their good handicap. But here comes Shore and Partners, third on the water. But Smeg is only a minute behind Bigfoot on handicap, so... Oh, so they've got to beat them by a minute. There. What about Shore and Partners? Shore and Partners have six hand? minutes. Oh. Yeah, so... 
at the moment it's very close between Bigfoot, Shoren Partners and Smeg. Smeg. Okay, so yeah. Shoren, uh, Bigfoot's now around. Because Yandu and Finport are both scratched. Yeah, so, so they're out of it as far as handicap's concerned, yeah. you'd think. Yeah. yeah. So they're on the run home. So I'd, I'd say that we're looking at the handicap winners in this top group of five here. So the Bigfoot got that wrong, didn't they? They tacked short and then missed the mark. And Smeg have um, looked like they're Split. making good... Yep. They've split with the fleet. And, and got a nice the header, haven't they? Smeg down they the do. Point Piper shore. Well, the rest of them have gone to Shark Island. Yeah, and they're getting sucked up in under Shark Island there, if you can see that. I'm not sure whether that's... Just got a little bit light in there under Shark Island. Oh, look Whereas, at Finport now. Talk about light. So, yeah. Shore and Partners jibes early. His Finport's run out of wind. Yeah. Spinnaker's just collapsed. Yandu jiving early. And the, 80, the Bigfoot's in there as well. <laughs> but this is real advantage, Smeg. Yes, yeah, so Smeg has four minutes. There's Smeg, bow down with pressure. Smeg might lead them home here. A huge advantage. There's the finishing line way in the distance. Down off Clark Island. Smeg leads. And, and Smeg really have taken a lot of lead. They jived at the top mark and they went straight into pressure, a header. Oh, looking behind them, the boats have absolutely, the wind's collapsed. Smeg has got a massive lead from just in the last two or three minutes. Smeg's opened up a lead of about two or three minutes. Looks pretty relaxed on the old Smeg is sitting to Lewin. So that's uh, Karen Benson, who's yeah. a sponsor who's on board. She's obviously doing a good job today. They've been oh. one of our longest term sponsors for yeah. the 18 footers. Yep, it would be nice to see them get a win today. The boat's behind us off camera. They're jibing to get try and get into some wind. Yandu's stopped. Uh, the Bigfoot are just getting a wriggle on, but meanwhile... We talk about that split in the wind mm. up in, the, in that corridor up there, and Smeg just played it beautifully. They just jumped straight on the mark, saw that pressure coming out of Point Piper and just took into it. Whereas um, those other guys, they just hit that Shark Island with a big, a big lull. And yeah, so Smeg doesn't want to go too far here. No. I think he's got to get out into a bit of breeze. But the trailing pack now is starting to rumble down a bit, but the lead... Is very significant. Smeg, I think he'll be thinking of jiving shortly. Well, that's the lonely track he's taking down to the to the finishing line. He's way out ahead. No, they're continuing on. Uh, ah, now he's wanting to, be wanting to cover the fleet behind them. Yeah. I would have thought. Yandu's the big loser there. Smeg would be wanting to put themselves between this group here. Yeah, they've got a job. There they go now off camera. They've just jived, Smeg. And, and the finishing line. Want to put themselves. Yep. Okay, so this is the battle for second between Shore and Partners and Finport. So Smeg have got to beat Shore and Partners by a minute. Is that right? Yeah, so Shore, Shore and Partners, there's six minutes. Smeg are four minutes. It's actually oh, four, two minutes. Two minutes. Yeah, two Ooh, minutes. This is going so, to be tight. I think Shore and Partners and advantage here. Yeah, Finport's a scratch boat. So, so they're, they're out of play. They're out of play. Yandu's out of play. Yep. The other... I think it's, is this Bigfoot. it's Shore and Partners. Don't go too far here, Emma. And Bigfoot are five minutes, so... So really, it's now between Smeg and Shore and Partners. So Shore, Smeg got to beat them home by two minutes. So that's the way we see it. That is correct. Yeah. Smeg's on four minutes. Shore and Partners. Six okay. Minutes. Well, Smeg are going to lead the race home. Very good performance by that team. They've had their moments in the JJs. They came good towards the end of the season. Very consistent performer. Long-term sponsor of the 18 footers. The name Smeg has been a former JJ champion. They're just lining up now to come to the finish. To take first to finish on us in the final race for 2024. That's not quite at the finishing mark. That's the finishing mark just below the ferry. One more jive and in. So Adrian's got the clock running. Okay, there they go. Great effort. Mainsel just coming across now. Okay. There they are. They're winners.
Well, well done. They well really done. sailed a good, they good did. race. They did. It's a tricky day. They had a poor first lap, but after that, they really just sailed the pressure so well and didn't make any mistakes. Both no, no. Okay, so Nathan McNamara, Jed Crookshank and Jack Taylor. Full marks to you, boys, and a great thrill. And girls, Chippo? Full, well, boys was, and girls. Yeah, well, it was a great thrill for Karen Benson. Yeah. And we've got... Um, oh, Smeg, uh, Shaw and Partner's going to win this, I think, on Handicap, yes, aren't they? Yes, so there's only 30 seconds. That's, they've been so across far. about 35 oh, seconds. Yep. Here they come. Yeah, Shaw and Partner. It's only 45 seconds difference. Emma really. Rankin, Cam McDonald, Tom Quigley. And maybe this, we're looking yes. at the Queen. Yeah, Shaw and Partners, we've just... Shaw and Partners are six minutes. Emma Tallis, they're just about... So Bigfoot can't beat them because no. they are five minutes. So and it looks like Emma Tallis with Emma Rankin, the skipper, may be the queen of the harbour because they're less than, they finished less than a minute behind, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, that's right. So Finport, they can't... They're, they're third to finish. Five. Yep. Bigfoot are only five minutes and Shaw and Partners were six minutes, so Bigfoot... Foot can't. It's so far. Then it's Smeg in second. So Finport. Foot in third. Oh, they. On a handicap. Yeah. What was their handicap, Adrian? Sorry, Bigfoot. Bigfoot. What Bigfoot was that? Bigfoot is only five, five. minutes. Ah, right. So Shore and Partners were six. Bigfoot five, and Smeg four minutes. So well, at the moment we've got um, Shore and Partners one, Smeg two, Bigfoot three. Well, the podium. Yeah, that's got Royal Oak and Balmain coming down this uh, right hand side. But coming down, I mean, six are not necessarily out of the picture yet. No, they've got to get here quickly. They've, they've got nine minute handicap, so, so that would be three minutes behind Shore and Partners. Yes. They need to be inside three minutes. That's going to be tough because it's two minutes, 13 seconds. So, so that's in speak finish. That's in speak finished. Yeah. yeah. Okay, Yandu. 45 seconds, yeah. then um, Shore and Partners finished behind Smeg. Okay, Royal Oak, they've put in a good performance today. Pamela Johnson there. And the only 10 minute boat was the 18 footers bar and restaurant, and I don't think they're in the picture anyway. No, Royal they've just Oak. gone around the top mark right now, okay. Adrian. Balmain, so, we haven't seen much of them today, like Lyra so, Puckeridge, a Balmain employee. Balmain, they were two minute handicap today. Yeah. So They've always come good towards the end of the race, uh, Balmain. Still, still very close with sixth here. Um, two minutes 54. So if they get in in 45 seconds, they could still beat Shore and Partners. Okay, well, Balmain are across. So just if we have a look at six there, they'll be very close. They might even get a podium position here. The Balmain across seventh. Okay, Lazarus... they've, got, they've got 30 seconds to finish sixth. Ooh, they're so close. We've got 20 seconds to finish. We're relying on you, Adrian. Yeah. No. <laughs> well. <laughs> okay, Lazarus made a bit of a comeback, as you'd expect with a Lazarus. Oh, this is going to be so close with sixth here. I think maybe they've got 10 seconds oh, to finish. Oh, Lazarus and Rag and Famish down at the pin. Yeah. Uh, Lazarus is going to get them. Oh, three seconds. Lazarus. Four seconds. Yeah. Okay. Six missed out by less than five seconds. Rag, then six, the girls. Oh, and then, is... oh, Marine Outlet with the batons the wrong way around. Marine Outlet, 11th. So that's four minutes since Smeek finished. Well, the next to finish will be by Kobe. Where did they get to? They led yeah. after the first lap, Jimmy. They must have... Oh, they, they, they just had some the good fun. Lap, they got lost on the second Yeah, lap. a lot of they boats headed did. Out, headed out to the left-hand side of the course, which... Uh, now the only you boat... can see on screen that there's quite a lot of little clouds out there. Well, and they look were at big, the rains coming yeah, now. They, they were a real key to today. Because, um, okay, by Kobe is next. Lines came from. The Langleys, Pat's on board, and his daughter Beth Langley, uh, borrowing the boat. The Are boat we? I haven't seen, Jimmy, is Fisher Pikel. Did they finish? No, they haven't finished there. No. So I don't know where they ended up. Oh, there yeah, they are. Yeah. Right off the wharf yeah. Shark Island, just said. Richard, it. I haven't got any good news for you in Lord Howe Island, mate. I'm sorry, your daughter's um, bringing up the rear.
as the burrowing about to go across. Oh, come on, boys, get that. <laughs> Too many people on board. Well, as we wind the race down, we think, we're provisionally, we must say, we're only doing this um, provisionally. We think, Adrian, what, the shore sure, partners, first, and yeah, then six, six, perhaps second, and then yeah. Smeg third. Yeah. As we say, unofficial. So if that is the case, then but the this, Queen of the Harbour will be on shore and partners will be well, those Emma Tallis. Six will be kicking themselves yeah, because so that, they really, you know, had a great chance there. Yeah. Just one tiny little mistake at the bottom mark the first time. Yep, there's uh, the 18 footers. And there's Fisher Pikel there, the black spinnaker merging into the gloomy background. So as we wind down here on the harbour for the last time, we'd like to um, say a few thank yous. And first of all, a very big thank you to our crew on the starting boat. There in the white shirt is Jeremy Whitty, who after 17 years of officiating here in various capacities, saying goodbye to the sport of 18s. He's, stand smile, Jeremy. He's standing down. There he is. He'll give us a wave, Jeremy. Still working. As we say goodbye to Jeremy, 17 years of great service, dedicated service, always affable, never flustered, as you'd expect from an ex-Qantas jumbo pilot, I suppose, but he's done a magnificent job. He always gets uh, criticised, but never gets complimented. But often, more often than not, there's no criticism. He's done a sterling job. So I think on behalf of everyone associated with the 18 footers, we say thank you to Jeremy for your service to the sport and certainly to the 18s. As we watch the couple of the tail enders come across now is the 18 footers bar and restaurant. Following her will be the kitchen maker and then the last tail end, Charlie, will be Fisher Pikel. So, and the 18, 18 footers that had the Williams family on board, the mum and dad and their daughter Chelsea, yeah. which is nice. Well, they've come back a little bit. Yeah, they have. So and I think... Uh, that crossing, we've got the, ki the kitchen maker is crossing the line now. Well, it's been a fun day. We, we, we can't really officially tell you who's won because it's, it's all based close. on handicap. It'll be very close. So. You can read it. We'll tell you next season who won, if you like, if you're that keen. But it was. <laughs> I, it was I think it was Shore and Partners in six. Yeah. I'm pretty sure. Okay, but but so there was only, it was literally, you know, five seconds in it, yeah, really. It was yeah. very exciting. Six came in over the finishing line on three strings and, you know. Hammering they away. Looked, no, they looked fantastic. Well, Smeg. And that was a boat with four girls on board today, yeah, which was a, a fantastic. Great, great result for them. And Smeg, and if Shore and Partners won, well, Emma Rankin, that's a great end to the season for her. She's been very, very strong through this season and toughed it out in tough conditions and uh, full marks to her. So, but uh, well, Certainly the JJ Giltman had quite a variety of yes. conditions, wasn't it? And yeah. It was very hot and, so, you know, times are very light. Yeah. So across the line it was Smeg, Shore and Partners, Finport and Bigfoot with Yandu Fifth. So, Adrian Cahalan, thank you very much for your company today. It was My wonderful to see you. Both. Always nice to yeah. spend the Sunday afternoon out on the harbour yeah, watching the lovely. ADs. Yeah, terrific. You've, uh, yeah. We've really enjoyed your company and your insightful knowledge. And <laughs> um, But where's it going to have rain? Is my garden going to get wet tonight, Adrian? Yeah, it looks like it. It does, you know, Which it? is good because we need some rain, I think. It's a, we've yeah. had a really hot summer here. Yeah. There's a cyclone up north at the moment, Cyclone ne Megan. So, hopefully that... All right, well, well, thank you, Adrian. And um, so we say goodbye for the final time for 2023-24 season. It's been a great season, I think. We've seen some wonderful racing, especially in the JJs. It was um, a real contest. But I think <coughs> we thank everyone that's been viewing. Um, Sail Media have really enjoyed bringing this coverage to you. And the compliments we've got and the comments we've got have been extraordinary. And I think it's full marks to the team, certainly behind the scenes here. Um, Dylan Clark, the Dylan, uh, the drone pilot, has been absolutely magnificent. He served a good apprenticeship here, and he's been so good they've signed him up for Sail GP. So on board here, we've got Dylan Clark today, who won line honours in the Hobart race on Law Connect, and Adrian, who won handicap honours on Alive. So it's 
pretty good double we've got on board. But Dylan, to you, everyone has said how magnificent the uh, overhead shots have been. So congratulations. Good luck with the Sail GP for the rest of the year. To Sam. I don't know what Sam does. He collects the, uh, the drone, does he, for us? Yeah. He, He's the drone uh, he, crash pilot, is he? No, he keeps an eye on the drone and other air traffic movements around yeah. Sydney Harbour and relays things like when, you know, Dylan's flying the drone backwards, he can't see, obviously, for example, a yacht, so Sam's keeping an eye on that Fantastic. and letting him know what's going on. Yeah, he's a good, good eater of orange cake. He tells me he samples the orange <laughs> cake every week. <laughs> so, so good on you, Sam. Thanks, mate. It's been terrific. And Piers Hasgard on the camera. Wonderful. I mean, the shots we get are magnificent, and everyone pays the highest compliments to you and to the whole team and to Chits, Michael Chittenden, your efforts with the production of it all and the split screens and telling us what to do and what not to do, exemplary. So to you, Chits, I know everyone really appreciates you. You get cranky sometimes, but not all the time. So we, <laughs> we put up with that. So to you, thank you. Um, and last but not least, to Jimmy Bury who's put this whole show together with the boat and the skippering of this boat. It's not easy on a Sunday afternoon on the harbour when they've got spectator boats, you've got yachts going everywhere, you've got 18 footers and the way you line the boat up for the shots, Jimmy, is, is unbelievable and we always get the finishing line accurately, the starting line and we get all the boats in order and it's fantastic and I know the compliments that we get are mostly directed to the coverage that you're able to give us by the accurate positioning of the uh, camera cats. So to you guys, thank you very much. I know we've had a few other guys that have helped us throughout the season. To Bucko, who's away on, uh, I don't know where Bucko is, he's on leave or something, is he? Is he's he? on leave, yes. Well, right, okay, to you Bucko, thank you. Um, your weather insights have been um, interesting to say the least, amusing to say the least, um, uh, chaotic to say the least, but uh, we always enjoy and uh, your comments and uh, it's been good to have you as a former JJ uh, winner. Uh, on board throughout the year. So that's it for our season. Um, Jimmy, you want to say something? I want to say thank you to you, Pete. Without you guiding us around out here in commentary, um, we'd be a little bit lost. You <laughs> do an excellent job and really brought the uh, the commentary team along the way. Um, I know you come with a lot of commentary background and I really do appreciate you joining the SAR Media team and getting your insight into everything that you uh, you seem to delve into things that we, we go during the week trying to find out some stuff on people and you know you're like the walking encyclopedia of, of uh, people <laughs> most of the time. So thanks very much for everything that you've well, done for us. Appreciate that, Jimmy. Thank you. Well, it's the old story. If you don't know, make it up and people think you know about it, you see. So, right. so that's, now <laughs> that's how we get by. But anyway, it's been a pleasure. And I think to everyone who's been viewing, the Sail Media team have been very appreciative. So for 2023-24, it's over. The season is over. We'll be back in October when it all begins again. So farewell. Stay safe. Stay healthy, and we look forward to your company in October. Peter Shibway, for the final time, signing off from Sydney Harbour.